Hey, I'm Chris, and this is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my predictions for the Ultimate Fighter 24 finale, Johnson versus Elliot. Uh, I did say that I would, for the smaller shows, I'll do, you know, prediction shows for um, cards with title fights, and this has a flyweight title fight. But it is actually a really good card, and one I'm actually looking forward to doing predictions for. Um, also, something to note, too, I'll probably just kind of get through this as quick as I can. I won't do any, like, stat, read any stats or whatnot. Um, and maybe for some of these smaller shows, if I honestly feel like it, <laughs> um, I'll do, like, some sort of, like, quick picks, uh, prediction video, uh, similar to this. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to go as fast as I can after I, like, plug all my stuff. So, uh, as far as plugging my stuff goes, um, check out my author's website at www.chrismodelon.com. Uh, I am an author specializing in the fancy genre. Uh, you can also buy my first book, uh, The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99 on Amazon.com or on my website. And then you can also buy uh, some of my short stories and short story collections for $1.99, starting with The Land of the Wind Statues, The Horror Collection, and the Fantasy Fable Collection. So check this out, and uh, the links to check all that out will be provided on the descriptions. So, on to the card. Uh, let's get started off. Uh, Demetrius Johnson fights Tim Elliott. So, Demetrius Johnson, um, UFC flyweight champion, uh, consensus pound for pound uh, fighter. He is fantastic everywhere. Striking, he strikes in combination, he's real fast, he's good defensively, he's strong in the clinch, he has strong offensive takedowns that look like tackles, uh, he's a good pressure fighter, he has good takedown defense, strong scrambles, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are really good, I mean he hit arm bars on Horiguchi and um, Raga uh, in like the fifth round, and has, besides against Dodson, really well, and Benavides in the past, hasn't really lost a round <laughs> so far, uh, most recently just beat, uh, was it Cejudo, right, Tim Elliott, uh, real pressure fighter, has a handstand style, kind of like a Dominic Cruz style of fighter, um, he's t big for the weight class, Tough as nails and real unorthodox. Has a really good guillotine. He actually has a pretty good offensive takedown ability and a strong scrambling ability as well. And a really good chin. So that might make it really tough for Johnson just to like, you know, get past this guy's unorthodox style. But otherwise, I, I don't see what Johnson, on a technical level, Johnson should be better everywhere. It's good cardio. Both of them have really good cardio. Uh, Johnson's first round looks like his fifth round. So I'm going to go with uh, Demetrius Johnson to win this one. I'll go by decision, but I'm not like 100% about that. I can see a finish happening there. So right after that, Joseph Benavides fights Henry Cejudo. Cejudo is a Olympic level wrestler. In MMA, like his takedown, his best takedowns are probably are from the clinch, and he boxes. I mean, that's that's his game. It's like clinch takedowns and boxing. Biggest problem with Cejudo is that he is not much. He's not dangerous. He's not a guy that drops opponents. He's not a potent finisher. Um, you know, he does strike in combination. I mean, he boxes well. He just isn't particularly heavy-handed. So, that that's the problem with Cejudo. He's just not a dangerous fighter. Benavides, he's training at, uh, with Ludwig these days, full-time. Uh, he hits hard. He's a good wrestler, a good scrambler. I can see him get taken down, but I can also see him get back to his feet if he's taken down. And also, he has a really good guillotine. So, I mean, with that said, I mean... It's hard not to pick Cejudo, or excuse me, it's, not, it's hard not to pick Benavides here to win this. I think he's a better striker. He's a more dangerous striker. Um, he does have the really good guillotine and just better submission ability than Cejudo. I mean, Cejudo can win a decision, but I can't, I can see Cejudo take him down, but I can't see him keep him down. 
So, yeah, I'm going to go with Joseph Benavides, and honestly, I, I think he might outstrike Sudo and might actually hit, hit some good punches on him. So I'm going to go with Joseph Benavides to win by KO or TKO. That's right off that, Jake Ellenberger fights Jorge Masvidal. So Ellenberger made some waves by getting this upset win over Matt Brown. Uh, finish him off with a body kick. He's training with Codero these days, and, you know, we, we see, like, a bit of, like, I guess the old Jake Ellenberger, but, like, and he, then he dropped Matt Brown real early on. It looks like he's starting faster, which is good. He has some real heavy hands, adding a kicking game, and it, he has good uh, wrestling. However, his chin is still a bit, well, he still gets hit. Like, even Matt Brown was able to hit him a bit, and I, you know, Ellenberger just isn't the most confident guy. If he gets hit, he te he tends to collapse, you know, and also his cardio just isn't very good. Jorge Masvidal, the problem with Masvidal is, one, he gets split decisions, like, all the time. He doesn't always, like, pull the, you know, he'll coast when he shouldn't coast. But at his best, his boxing is real solid. He has a really good jab. He actually has a pretty decent kick uh, kick game, too. In the clinch, it, uh, Masvidal has some really good elbows. And I say this about Masvidal all the time. He has some of the best takedown defense in, like, the UFC. And his ability to get back to his feet when he's taken down is also really good, too. And he's got a strong chin. He's a guy that will get dropped, but has managed to come back after, like, getting dropped. Um, against guys like Crookshank, uh, Kiesa, he, he submitted Kiesa. So he also has an underrated, um, grappling game as well. Um, I can see Ellenberg actually dropping Masvidal early. I mean, Alvarez hits hard. It's not outside. Ike, like I said, though, Masvidal's got a really good chin. And I can see Masvidal taking over in the later rounds. Um, Masvidal is just such a bad slow starter. That's, like, one of the biggest problems. And if Ellenberger really comes at him in that first round, it can really cost Masvidal. It also just doesn't help Masvidal that um, he keeps getting these split decisions. It, it's just not good. On a technical level, I like what I see from Masvidal, though. Uh, I think he's going to be a bit undersized here. As far as just, like, strength goes, um, I don't consider Masvidal a big Walter weight. <laughs> you know, he used to fight at lightweight. It's not particularly big for Walter Waite. Um, Ellenberger's not tall for the division, but he's, like, strong for that division. Uh, this one's actually really hard for me to call, but uh, I am going to go Masvidal to win. I just think he can take the later rounds. I still question Ellenberger's uh, cardio, and also, like, if Ellenberger gets hit, I don't know if his confidence, like, crumbles, um, which we've seen happen before. So, and with Masvidal, that's not the case. He he's actually gets stronger if he gets hit <laughs> clean. So, I'm going to go Jorge Masvidal to win this by decision. So, right after that, Jared Cannonier fights uh, Ion Kutalaba. Cannonier recently fought at uh, heavyweight. He was pretty small for weight class. Uh, knocked out his last opponent. Um, he's kind of a guy that fights in spurts, you know? That's the only thing, but he hits real hard. He's actually a pretty solid boxer. Not a bad athlete, actually. Um, I don't know if he has... Well, his boxing's not too bad. But I don't know if he has the other parts of his game on, like, a really high technical level. Ayakut de Lava, though, doesn't have much in the way of technique. But he pushes forward. He's young. He has a really good chin. Super resilient. And he just keeps throwing. <laughs> and he's, all, he's like this all-offense type of guy. So in his last fight, uh, um, I forgot, forgot the name of the guy he fought, um, but, you know, he, that was his thing with Kudlava. He'd get hit clean, just keep coming forward, and just throw his strikes, and he's a bit unorthodox, too. Um, you know, I, I don't see Cannon here being able to drop Kudlava, and I see Kudlava just being able to push forward, throw his strikes... And just pressure, pressure, pressure. Uh, I'll go with Ian Kutalaba to win by decision. Next fight after that, Alexis Davis fights uh, Sarah McMahon. So Davis is a legit BJJ black belt. She is good on the ground. She's good off her back. Uh, she plays a high guard really well. 
will throw up triangles and whatnot. And she's actually really good at taking the back. Her striking isn't dangerous, but it's proven to be effective. Like against Carmouche, when she's like throwing leg kicks, you know, she's not a powerful puncher, but she'll throw. Um, but one thing that is that she just had a baby, um, and she's coming off this really long layoff, so I don't really know what she's gonna look like. Sarah McMahon, Olympic level wrestler, really strong clinch takedowns, especially. However, she's been something of a human blanket when she gets on top. Um, excuse me. When she strikes, she tends to overextend herself, but she does have power. Um, her third rounds aren't that great. Like Misha Tate was able to take take over in her fight. I think Lauren Murphy was able to take over in the third round against McMahon. Um, one thing I liked about McMahon in the last fight, though, against I, she showed some really good ground and pound and was like getting good positions and throwing like ground and pound once she had those good positions, whether it's like the turtle side mount or whatnot. And also, she's just been the more active fighter. Um, I can see maybe a scramble happen and the Davis like takes a back or something like that. But you know, I, I like McMahon here. Like I said, she has more power and strikes. I don't know if Davis can take her down, but I think McMahon can take her down. Um, so I'll go Sarah McMahon by decision. As far as that, Ryan Benoit fights Brandon Moreno. So Moreno got that uh, upset win over Luis Smolka. Um, he got, uh, you know, that guillotine. Uh, the other thing with Moreno, he's actually a pretty solid boxer, as long as, as well as having a good, uh, submission game as well. Ryan Benoit, he actually hits pretty hard. His, like, um, his striking, it's not that bad, but, like, his cardio is kind of not the greatest. His takedown defense is not very good. But he is good at scrambling back to his feet. And he hits hard. You know? And he's pretty tough. Um, otherwise, though, you know what? This is tough because Moreno... This, I, you know, upset could happen here. I, I'm guessing Moreno is probably the favorite here. Especially his upset win over um, Luis Smolka. Right now, though, Moreno's still something of, like, that kid with potential versus Benoit. At this point, it's probably, like, definitely more veteran than him. So, it could be something of a prospect loss. Um, for the most part, though, I'm going to go with the potential here. Like I said, I like Moreno's boxing. Um, his cardio is pretty good. His ground game's not too bad. So, uh, I'm actually going to go Moreno to win this one by submission. Okay, on to prelims. Ryan Hall fights uh, Gray Maynard. Uh, Ryan Hall, top BJJ practitioner, good leg locks, has that 50 50 guard. Um, obviously, he has more to his game. You know, he can take the back and whatnot. His striking isn't that good, and he's not that dangerous standing up. Uh, nor, yeah, nor does he have, like, particularly heavy hands. And also, he's not the greatest wrestler. You know, he's not great takedown guy but um he doesn't need to be considering what his, his jiu-jitsu acumen is like here's the thing with gray maynard though like his chin is shot but the fact of the matter is he's still a really good wrestler and the guys that beat him tend to outstrike him and the problem with ryan hall is i don't know if he can outstrike gray maynard Ray Maynard, offensively, he, he's not a bad striker. It's just his chin's bad, and defensively, he's not the greatest. Um, and like I said, Ryan Hall just hasn't really proven to be particularly dangerous standing. Uh, Maynard, to my not, besides on the Ultimate Fight, I don't think has been submitted. Um, besides against Nate Diaz on the Ultimate Fighter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I mean, it's possible that Ryan Hall could submit Maynard, it's just, I don't know if that's going to happen, you know, uh, Maynard's fought some pretty good guys in the UFC, n not in the Ultimate Fighter, but in the UFC, not got subbed, like I said, he tends to lose because he gets outstruck, Ryan Hall, I just don't know if he can do that, that's why I'm going to pick Gray Maynard to win this by decision, it's just that, I, you know, Maynard's takedown defense is really good, his sub defense looks fine, 
Um, and at this point, I don't think Hall is dangerous enough standing to really give Maynard problems that other opponent, opponents have been able to, you know, give problems uh, to him. So, yeah, Gray Maynard by decision. So I have that Rob Font fights Matt Danger Snell. Matt Snell is a natural flyweight. He's fighting at 135 for this fight, so that's going to be pretty tough. Font's not exactly small for this weight division. Snell, though, I like his ground game. He's good. He's really good on the ground. He's really aggressive if he's on his back. His stand-up isn't too bad either. Rob Font, though, uh, his striking's improving. He doesn't throw a lot. He's not a high-volume guy, but he does hit hard. He's relatively accurate, and he's pretty good defensively, too. His grappling looks to be, you know, uh, improving as well. So, with that said, I mean, with the size advantage, I, I would say the striking advantage, and just, you know, more time in the UFC, uh, I'm going to go Rob Font to win this one. You know what, I'll even go by K or TKO. I actually like Matt Chanel. I, I think he's actually a, a quality fighter uh, to have in the UFC. I think he can do pretty well. I think he can do well at flyweight, though. Um, but at uh, bantamweight against you know a guy like Rob Font, who's pretty actually pretty big for that weight class and hits hard for that weight class, you know, this is a tough... Uh, a tall first order for uh, Matt Schnell. So Rob Font by KRTK. So after that, Brendan O'Reilly fights Dong Hyun Kim. Maestro Dong Hyun Kim. So the thing with Maestro Dong Hyun Kim, great offense, terrible defense. That's all you need to know, really. He can brawl. Um, his chin actually isn't the worst. You know, this is a guy that takes a lot of hard shots and keeps coming and like the fights he's been in. He's been in some crazy brawls. Uh, it's just, his defense is just bad, you know? But the problem with Brendan O'Reilly is, like, he's kind of like this grind, like, grinder brawler who's not particularly heavy-handed. He's not that technical. I mean, O'Reilly's takedown game isn't that bad. He's not, but he's just not that great, um... At any one aspect of the game, nor is his cardio that good. Kim, at the very least, I mean, I don't say his cardio is great, but man, for the amount that he throws, <laughs> that Kim throws, I mean, he he's very resilient, and because of that, I mean, I think I, I'm actually gonna go with Maestro Dong Hyun Kim to win this one. I'll even go by K or TKO. I think he'll just outwork O'Reilly, maybe get a K or or like at least a TKO victory. Shout out to that. Kylan Curran fights Jamie Moyle. So, the thing with Moyle is that she is small for the weight division. Ah, she is like a little pit bull, though. I mean, she keeps coming forward. She's good in the clinch. She's good clinch striking, and her ground game's good, too. Um, her overall striking is good. She strikes in combination. She's actually really solid everywhere. She's just, if you ever watched her in Invicta, like, there's one fight that was really close. She just got clinched a lot against and got pushed against the cage and bullied. And then when she fought in the Ultimate Fighter against, like, Amanda Bobby Cooper. Amanda Bobby Cooper is huge for the weight class. Uh, Cooper's fought at, like, 125. And she was able to really, you know, she wasn't actually... I don't think she even did that well in the stand-up. She was just able to take Moyle down and pound on her, you know? Kylan Kern is a good wrestler. She is actually, like, a good size for the division. She's not undersized at all. Her striking is improving. She's kind of a slow starter, though. And she's still, like, eternally green, you know? She, like, her striking's good, but it's not great. And it still needs some technical improvement. Her ground game's good, but it's, it's not great, you know? She... I, I don't know if she can keep opponents down, first of all. So, this one's tough to call because, like, Kern's going to be the bigger fighter and might be able to bully Moyle. But I just like Moyle here to be able to pressure a lot, be, like, a little pit bull here, throw a little more, and throw a little more technically. So, I'm going to go Jamie Moyle to win this by uh, decision. 
Okay, on the prelims, Elvis McTopchick fights Anthony Smith. This one's really hard for me to call because the thing with Anthony Smith is he's all offense and terrible defense, and he doesn't have a good chin. I mean, striking it has actually improved, you know. Um, and his great game actually isn't too bad too. He actually has a good amount of submission victories. His problem is with Smith is his defense sucks bad. His chin isn't very good. He, and, like, his cardio's not very good. The problem with Mutopchik is, uh, Mutopchik's tough, but he doesn't throw a lot. But when he throws, he looks pretty good. His boxing is good. He actually moves his head. And, um, you know, his grappling, I'd say it's just average. You know, his takedown defense isn't bad. Um, you know, his overall grappling game isn't that bad. But it's just not that great. Um... So this one makes it really tough to call because if Mutopchik can't finish him, you know, I don't know if he's going to throw. That That's the biggest problem with Mutopchik. He just doesn't throw. You see it in like, his fight against Kevin Casey, his fight against French Barbaros, uh, um, whoever else he has fought like in the UFC that I can't really think of. Um, you know, he just doesn't throw. And Anthony Smith will throw, he'll throw a lot to sometimes his detriment because he'll get like countered and, and hit hard. Um, the thing is though, Mutopchik's tough. I, he's not a guy that traditionally gets finished quite that easily. So, with that said, uh, this one's close. Um, I don't know if Mutopchik has the power to put Anthony Smith away, but Anthony Smith will leave those openings to get finished, too. Uh, you know, it's one of those, like, first time for everything. You know what? I'm going to go Alvis Mutopchik to win this one. I'm even going to go by KO Tico. Maybe he finally turns it around. Uh, once again, that's not a confident pick, though. Um, as you can tell, it's almost like I'm hoping that Mutopchik will throw more, be able to hit accurately, and um, break... Anthony Smith's already bad defense. But Mutopchik just has to throw, you know, to do that. And finally, Josh Stansbury fights Devin Clark. I think that's at 205. Stansbury is kind of just good everywhere, but not great at anyone else for Kevin MMA. Um, he can wrestle a bit. He can strike a bit. He's actually pretty tough, though. Uh, the thing with Devin Clark, he, he got knocked out by Alex Nicholson in his last fight. Now, fight he was doing really well. You know, his wrestling looked good. His striking actually didn't look that bad. Um, he's a pretty good athlete, too. Stansbury isn't much. You know, he didn't come off as much of an athlete. Uh, the problem is, though, that also then just raises questions if Devin Clark has a bad chin or not. Granted, Alex Nicholson hits hard. Or hits really hard. I, I don't know if Stansbury hits that hard. On a technical level, I like that. Like Devin Clark is a pretty good wrestler. Should be the better athlete. This one's close because Sandra is just like really tough. But I'm going to go Devin Clark to win this one by decision. I think he can mix in some wrestling and some striking um, to get a really like ugly. You know, I think it'll be an ugly win. Okay, to recap, I have Johnson beating. Uh, Johnson uh, over Elliott by decision. Benavides over Cejudo by K.O. Tico. Masvidal over Ellenberger by decision. Uh, Kitalaba over Kenanier by, was it decision? Uh, Sarah McMahon over Alexis Davis by, I think it was decision. And uh, Moreno beating, or Brandon Moreno over Ryan Benoit. I believe that was by sub, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, on the prelims, I have Gray Maynard over Ryan Hall by decision. Rob Font uh, beating Matt Chanel by K.O. Tico. Dong Hyun Kim, Maestro Dong Hyun Kim over Brendan O'Reilly by K.O. Tico. Jamie Moyle over Kylan Curran by decision. Okay, on the Fight Pass prelims, I have Elvis Mutopchik over Anthony Smith. I actually called K or Tico. I'm, I, I'm not too confident in that pick. And uh, Devin Clark over Josh Stansbury by decision. 
So that's pretty much it for my predictions for the Ultimate Fighter 24 finale. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And uh, please check out my author's website at www.chrismondon.com and uh, buy some of my works as well. So that's pretty much it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.